Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me. Today, Avery and I want to bring you on a relaxing walk through the gardens here at Clover Hill. But first, we are going to prepare a signature cocktail and some simple appetizers to accompany the cocktail. For the cocktail, I am serving a classic 19th century vodka gimlet. For appetizers, I am making a garden fresh pesto with parsley and mint, plus some adorable cucumber and feta canapes, and some goat cheese and rosemary toasts. Let's head into the kitchen. Going to start with the vodka gimlet cocktail. It only needs three ingredients. One of them is simple syrup. Simple syrup is nothing more than equal parts water and sugar. I'm going to make a lot of the syrup. So I have two cups or 500 mils of water. And then I'm going to add two cups or 400 grams of regular granulated sugar. Simple syrup stores really well in the refrigerator. You can even freeze it. Okay, then I'm going to move this over to the stove top. I will bring this to a boil and then reduce the heat to a simmer and let it simmer until the sugar dissolves. That's going to take about three minutes. All right. My simple syrup has simmered for about three minutes. And as you can see, it is perfectly clear. That means the sugar has dissolved and the syrup is done. So I'm taking it off the heat and we're going to let this cool to room temperature. Now I need one cup or thereabouts of fresh lime juice. This lemon and lime juicer is really convenient because it draws all of the juice out of the lime or the lemon. Six limes gave me exactly one cup. Now I need another lime that's thinly sliced. Now I'm making this cocktail in a pitcher simply because I don't want to have to make individual cocktails in a cocktail shaker. I will be able to put the pitcher in the refrigerator. And now we need the one cup of lime juice. So I'm going to add two cups of vodka. Now I'm going to add three quarters of a cup or 175 mils of the simple syrup, which has cooled. Then add the lime slices. I'm not going to add any ice, at least not right now, because I'm going to put this into the refrigerator. I want this to be good and cold when my guests arrive. This vodka gimlet is so delicious that I decided to double the recipe. Now I'm going to make the parsley and mint pesto. So I have some parsley from my garden. There are no exact measurements here. And I have some mint leaves from the berry farm because I'm not growing mint this year. Parsley is a very well-behaved plant in the garden. Mint is not. Mint is a beast. Likes to take over. I'm only using a small amount of mint, and then I will taste the pesto as we go along. A garlic clove or two, or the equivalent in garlic paste. Two ounces, or 56 grams, of slivered almonds. You could use pine nuts and about a handful of grated Parmesan cheese. Pulse. I'm 
going to add olive oil through the feed tube just until a thick pesto develops. I want to taste this. This is really nice. I think I'm going to add some lemon. Just a tiny squirt of lemon for brightness. Fresh spoon, another taste. Incredibly delicious. I'm going to decant this pesto into a bowl. And I will be serving the pesto with crackers. Of course, you could put this pesto on fish or chicken or pasta. And into the refrigerator. This can be refrigerated for up to five days. Before we move on to the next appetizer, I need to bring Avery on a short walk in the garden. Please join us. Onto the cucumber feta canapes. First ingredient is an English or hothouse cucumber. And I'm going to slice this into quarter inch rounds. Set the cucumber rounds on a paper towel because we want to blot any excess moisture from the rounds. Set this aside. These canapes are topped with little feta cheese flowers. And to make the flowers, you use one of these little flower cutters. And I will link this in the description below. Now, I have to cut this block of feta into three equal horizontal pieces. was easier to do than I thought it would be. The feta that has crumbled, of course, I am going to save. It would be wonderful on a salad. These are a little labor intensive to do, but they are really pretty. These canapes also need some lemon I think it's pronounced aioli. It's lemon mayonnaise. So I need roughly a quarter cup of mayonnaise. A tiny shot of lemon juice. A pinch of kosher salt. Grinds of black pepper. And stir. These little feta canapes are going to be garnished with a lemon curl. So I do need just little pieces of lemon peel to assemble the cucumber feta canapes. Take a cracker, add a tiny dollop of the lemon mayonnaise, put a cucumber round on top, 
add another little dollop of the mayonnaise and put the feta flour on top and finish with a piece of lemon peel. The lemon peel is only for decoration. I wanted to mention that this recipe for these canopies was inspired by one I found in Tea Time magazine. A little labor intensive, but worth it for the final effect. On to the goat cheese toast. This is really easy to do. Take a baguette and cut it into a oh, quarter inch slices. I'm only doing nine slices here. And then, this is my oven. It's preheated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 200 degrees Celsius. Take some olive oil and then brush the baguette slices with the oil. I'm going to pop this into the oven until the bread has toasted. That's going to take about 10 minutes. While the bread is toasting, take some goat cheese. This is at room temperature and put the cheese in a bowl. Mash the cheese with a spoon. We're going to set this aside for a moment. I'm going to top the toast with some rosemary. This is the rosemary that we bought at the berry farm earlier today. Roughly chop the little needles. This smells wonderful. If you don't like rosemary, you could always use thyme leaves. And here's our toasted bread. You can do the toasts well ahead of time and just set them aside until about 30 minutes before you want to serve the toast. And when you're ready, top them with the goat cheese. This is one of those super simple cocktail appetizers that looks much fancier than it actually is. Then let the rosemary needles rain down on the goat cheese. And then pop this into the oven for a couple of minutes, just so the goat cheese becomes melty. Here is the goat cheese toast. It smells divine. Well, just as we began setting up outside, it started to rain. So we're going to do this closeout rather quickly. I hope you enjoyed our little garden walk and the drinks and nibbles. I certainly enjoyed your company. And I hope you will give some of these dishes a try someday. Take good care of yourself. Have a lovely weekend. And I will see you in next week's video. Chin chin.